the Midday Show, Sports Radio 94 WIP. Hugh Douglas, Joe Giglio, Kyle Quinn behind the glass. And it's that day, our yearly spring goodbye, unfortunately too early, to the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm. They go down last night, 118 115. A lot of emotions. A lot of emotions today for a Sixers season that ends in six games in the Eastern Conference quarterfinals. Good morning, Hugh. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Philly. You know, you're not going to make everybody happy. I wouldn't even try. You know what? I think that's a, that's a fair way to, to lead us in today. It's a good daily, Douglas. And yeah, today's a, today's a tough day. It's a date event. It's a day, obviously, to look a little bit forward because there was, were some good things, especially Tyrese Maxey in the series that we'll feel good about. But it's a day for our emotion. 215-592-9494. Your chance to react to the end of the six season. We'll get into a lot here. Coaching decisions last night. We'll spin it forward to the offseason, of course. A lot on Joel Embiid and what happened last night. But bottom line is I'm just disappointed. I'm just disappointed because I thought they could have won that game. I thought they could have won the series if it got back to seven. The Pacers are now in that side of the bracket against the Knicks. The, yeah. I thought the Sixers could have beat the Pacers. Yeah. I, I thought this team could have went on a big run. And unfortunately, Hugh, they just couldn't overcome a couple things. One, the Knicks had more athleticism and rebounding the entire series. You yeah, saw they, that, that was oh, their bread and butter. It like, really was. Like that was their – that has been the Knicks' staple all season long. Yes. The fact that they're, they're a really, really good rebounding team, and, and that's what really killed us. The boards really killed us. Yeah, and I'm just disappointed they couldn't close again. They couldn't close it. I, I give the Sixers credit because they did not roll over. I mean, 30, it's 33-11 to 11 in the yeah. first quarter, and my thought is, oh, my goodness. Are they going to roll over and die the way they did in Boston last Mother's Day? And they didn't. I, I, I give them credit for that because they, they didn't. They fought. The buddy healed out of nowhere. Three-point barrage in the first half was awesome. Joel Embiid played well for all, a lot of this game, and he gave what I was hoping he would give, which is a lot of points and a lot of effort and all that kind of stuff. Max he didn't have his best game. We'll get to all the ins and outs of it. But, you might, Hugh, I just wake up today disappointed. I, I – I do think we saw a great playoff series. I mean, that re- they just put the graphic up on ESPN on TV in front of us. The score of the series, you had all the games up, was 650 to 649. Like, it mm. was, this was as close for six games as you could have. Yeah. So we, were, we got to watch a great series. We really did. And the Sixers gave great effort for almost all of it. I'm just disappointed they weren't good enough here, Hugh. That, that's my feeling this morning. I, I'm disappointed that they couldn't do this. Yeah. I'm I'm a little bit optimistic, but like it's one caveat with my optimism, because I understand that there are some long suffering Sixer fans out there. So so even though I am optimistic, what I am not going to do today is come on here and you know exude my optimism because there are some people out there that are real miserable. Joe, I was on my way to work this morning, and, and you know like for me, I'm not my facial expressions. I've been told are not the friendliest. You know, it, it always like what they call I have uh, RBF. I have RBF, and a lot of times, you know, it's like people say I look unapproachable. I mean, I am, but you know you know how that goes. But I remember, like, this morning getting on the elevator. That's all anybody really wanted. To, we wanted to commiserate. People wanted to com- yep. commiserate this morning because we all stayed up and watched that game last night. And, and, and I feel like the city has mixed emotions about what they saw. I think that there are a lot of people out there that felt like you do or, or like some do that the, the effort was valiant. The effort was valiant. But there's a lot of people out there that I also feel like they're just tired of the same old, same old. Mm-hmm. Because they've been dealing with this process thing for 11 seasons, and the outcome has been the same. So, so, so like I said, I'm not about to sit here and beat anybody over the head with my optimism because I don't think that's the right thing to do. But I am pretty optimistic about what I saw last night. Well, they, they, listen, I, I think here's the thing that, that we all could take away. And it, maybe we've created a low bar. This was not the worst one or one of the worst ones we've seen in recent years when they go out. I mean, last year on Mother's Day in Boston was a pathetic effort. It was pathetic. They weren't pathetic last night. They just lost. They just lost to a team that was back and forth the entire time. Game six, third quarter, fourth quarter against Miami two years ago, pretty pathetic. Game seven, Father's Day, Ben Simmons not dunking, a million turnovers from Embiid in 2021, pretty pathetic to lose to the Hawks at home in a game seven. I don't feel that it was pathetic what I saw last night. I feel like they just lost to a team that was slightly better, finished better, has a better closer at the end of the game. Great, got off to a hell. Like, 22 points down, Joe. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was done. I was like, ugh. I, I thought they were going to boat like, race. Like, 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 like I, was, I was sitting there, and I'm like, 
Well, we've been like these games kind of start this way, but not like this. Twenty two is a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. So I was a little nervous, but they they fall back. They definitely fall back. Yeah, the silver lining of the twenty two point deficit was it was the first quarter, right? It's like, man, there's a lot of basketball to be played. Now, did I think they'd be leading at the half? Did I think Buddy Heald would come in and have an all time heater? I did not. But ultimately, with sometimes with a season, you know, it ends the way you know, like kind of what you are comes back at the end. And what the Sixers are is they struggle to close games. They've always struggled to close games in the postseason. They weren't a good enough rebounding team, and they have some players in this team, or at least one, that's a, t- a total, total and complete stiff. And when you have a total and complete stiff on the court, it's tough to win in the NBA postseason. Kyle, how you feeling? And then we'll uh, we'll see what Embiid had to say. What, what are you feeling this morning as the Sixers get eliminated in round one? You're probably gonna think. This is not Kyle or somebody else. I, I feel like strangely fine today. Like I'm okay. I don't, maybe I'm just numb or something. But this is probably the best that I have ever felt following a Sixers playoff loss. The best I've ever felt about the team, the direction that they're going, Joel Embiid, all of that stuff. Like. They showed up last night. I heard Jack on the afternoons yesterday saying, "When does it matter? The night just show up." And I'm like, "That's moronic." <laughs> but after the game was over, I was like, you know what? Like, I feel okay. I'm proud of this team today. I am. I know that sounds really weird because they just lost in the first round in six to the Knicks, who I think everyone would agree is probably not as good of a team as uh, as the Sixers are. I think my expectations went in just a little bit too high, and I adjusted during the series, and I feel all right right now. I just do. Like, Embiid played a good game. He showed up in an elimination game. The Sixers were down, like, 22 points in the first quarter. And they made it a game until the very end. Like, that was one of the better Sixers performances in the playoffs with, like, under this regime that I've seen. So I'm, like, strangely not totally pissed off today. Yeah, I, I think part of this, I think part of your take is, is fair and makes sense. Part of it is just we compare it to other ones, right? Like, you compare it to Boston in game seven last year, you feel great because that one you felt like you wanted to roll over and, and vomit. You compare it to this, the game seven against the Hawks in, in 2021 where Ben wouldn't dunk. And last night felt like, you know, it felt great compared to that because that was awful. Last night wasn't awful. It's just it's just disappointing that they couldn't force a Game 7 when they had an opportunity. And let's not forget, I know, Hugh, you mentioned they were down 22, and that's a valiant effort to come back. But they then were up 10, right? Like, they flipped this thing around to where they were up 10 in the second half. 215-592-9494. Joel Embiid last night talking about... The game, the series, and the future here in Philadelphia. I mean, it sucks to lose. The goal is to win the championship. Um, you know, any any times, any time that don't happen, uh, that's all I care about. I don't care, you know, if I got to the second one. Uh, you know, that does not mean anything to me. Uh, we just didn't accomplish what we wanted to. All right, let me let me uh, just throw this out there about Embiid. And, and I again, I'll say it this way: He played well last night. He showed up. He did not. He, he wasn't by any means anything but really good last night. He was. But I, I do I keep coming back to this, and I, I don't even know if this is a Joel Embiid problem, if it's a Sixers problem, if it's a combination of the two. It's striking to me that in the NBA playoffs, the games are always seemingly decided close ones in the last five minutes. And the last five minutes of games, Joel Embiid, it's like he's not there as much as he is in the beginning of the game. Is it fatigue? Is it because the the reality of him being a center? I, I don't know. All I know is Brunson closed that game last night. There's yeah, five did. minutes to go, and the game is right there. And Brunson's taking shot after shot and creating shot after shot. And Embiid's playing more hot potato with the basketball. And that's just the reality. Not, and, it kind of indecisive. Yeah. And yeah. I, I look, two last year it was Tatum who outplayed him in a game seven, who outplayed him down the stretch. Three years ago it was Jimmy Butler. I, it's, it, I keep coming back to this, that if he's not – more dominant at the end, it's hard to actually win. Like, I'm not blaming him today. He played well. No, he, he played extremely well. He gave well. what I asked yesterday. He, yes, he, he did. He provided a lot. Yes, he did. It's just with – in the NBA, if your best player isn't closing the game with four minutes to go, someone else has to. And it's like, who's doing it? And Maxi last night wasn't his best. You, you know what? It, it, you know what? I, I thought – because who's the ref you said that usually has – the extender? Scott who's the Foster. extender? Scott Foster. It felt to me down the stretch – that Joel Embiid was trying to get more to the charity stripe as opposed to just taking over. And and get it, I like again, I'm not blaming him because we understand, <clears throat> excuse me, that he was dealing with a whole lot, the knee and everything. And you know, the, the last time we saw him jump and, and jump with authority, he hurt himself. Yep. But what bothered me towards the end, again, not mad at him, but I was just like, get up, big fella. He was on the ground a lot. 
in that fourth quarter. Like when he was trying to drive to the basket, like in the third quarter when he was backing down, uh, what was the name, the, the big center? Hartenstein. Hartenstein, I was about to say something else. But, yeah, when he was backing him down, that was – that was, to me, was what the big fella needed to do. Because I, I tweeted out to you, I was like, be 7-2. And he was being 7-2 was. in that moment. But as the game started, to, the time started to wind down, what I saw was Joel and B trying to get to the charity stripe. He was trying to get to the charity stripe, and he would fall on the ground, and he, would, he, would, he was at, like trying to get calls. It wasn't happening. That's when you have to take over the game. Yeah, and in, in the first three quarters, it, that was maybe the most I've ever seen him play in the paint in the playoffs. He They couldn't stop him. I mean, Hartenstein is a, is a decent player, and he obviously had a nice series here, but he's no match. Like, when Embiid wanted to put his body into him and get to the basket, it was just basket after basket after basket. Embiid was phenomenal, phenomenal early on. But unfortunately, in the fourth quarter, he, he didn't provide enough. I mean, th- these games come down to this in the fourth quarter of the NBA playoffs. Close games. Whose best player is going to close the game better? And Brunson did it. I mean, Brunson walked away the, the bigger star in the series. He made me kind of mad with those fouls that he was getting. Those He's crafty. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that was some old Trey Young stuff, man. But, I mean, I know that's a part of the game. He does that thing where he, like, stop, he, he stops and pops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it bothered me a little bit. Yeah, but he, I get it. Yeah. I mean, you know, he got to the line. He made the shot. But it's like, uh, I mean, he was just crafty. I mean, it was – they, 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 it was last night was their night. It was, and they were better. And it, it was probably apropos that it, the dagger was the Josh Hart three because that was kind of the beginning of that, the series. That hurt. Oh, that yeah. Hurt. Well, especially because they, they basically left him open again, right? Yeah. Like it's, it, it kind of repeated the beginning of the series where he has it and then they're like, yeah, I'd shoot it. And then he nailed it. 2 1 5, 5 9 2, 94 94. Disappointed, proud, frustrated. Where are you? Give us your emotion today as we discuss this Sixers team, the game, and the end of the season here.